If you showed this image to a group of veteran woodworkers, you're going to start a fight. Some will look at that and say these little metal brackets are installed improperly and the top will tear itself apart. Others will swear they've installed them that way for years and so did their granddaddy and they still eat dinner off his table every night. Internet message boards are full of similar arguments. Even woodworking magazines and other reputable sources often give bad advice, particularly regarding the installation of the figure eight style fastener. And taking the wrong advice may lead to a cracked or split tabletop. So today I'll cut through the nonsense and explain how they should be installed, why they should be installed that way, and then I'll give you some alternatives for attaching the top to your next project. Let's start with why you need tabletop fasteners in the first place. Why can't you just glue or screw the top directly onto your aprons? Because wood swells in humid times and contracts during dry ones. This constant movement means your tabletop will grow wider or shrink narrower depending on its environment or even the time of year. You may not worry too much about it while it's in your nice climate controlled house, but what if the air conditioning breaks down? Or what if you move to a different climate? Or what if your furniture goes into storage for a while? If you went to the trouble of building a quality piece of furniture that you wanted to last, you may as well make sure of it by fastening the top on in such a way that it can move independently of the base without cracking. Keep in mind though that boards do not grow longer. They only swell wider. You only have to worry about movement across the grain, not along the grain. That's an important distinction when considering the fastener you use and how to install it. So let's get back to the figure eight fasteners. These are designed to pivot. So as the wood swells and grows wider, the screws that secure the top and their holes can move to give the top the room it needs. Likewise, as the top shrinks, the fasteners can pivot in the other direction to accommodate that movement. To do this, they must be installed properly. Let's assume you built a small rectangular end table and it has a solid wood top with a grain that runs from front to back, much like this one. When you install these figure eight brackets on the front and rear apron, they will work just as I explained because the wood movement will be in the lateral direction, twisting the brackets from side to side as the panel gets wider or narrower. But what happens when you install them on the side aprons? Here, the aprons are running parallel to the grain, so the wood movement will be pushing directly in line with the two holes in the fasteners. Technically, the brackets don't move forward and back, so something has to give. In theory, it seems like the bracket cannot allow that panel to expand and contract at all, but in reality, it will. You can test this by standing a bracket on end and pressing firmly downward with a finger. You're not going to push it through your bench. Eventually, it's going to turn one way or the other and tip over. So brackets on the aprons that run parallel to the grain will allow for the top to expand towards them, at least to some extent. But what about allowing room for contraction? In this orientation, a shrinking tabletop can only pull against the brackets. It's like hooking two vehicles, one to each end of a trailer and driving in opposite directions. The bracket cannot pivot to allow for that force. So in that orientation, a figure eight bracket cannot allow the tabletop to shrink along its width, not when installed on the aprons that run parallel to the grain. However, if you've looked at enough furniture from the last hundred years, you've likely seen some old tables with figure eight brackets installed on all four aprons, and the top seemed to hold up just fine. So how can that be? Because while these may be installed straight on the aprons that run perpendicular to the wood grain, they must be installed differently on the aprons that run parallel to the grain. In those cases, you must slightly cant the bracket in one direction. Now, as the top shrinks, the brackets can turn themselves back straight and give the top a little room to move. As it swells, the brackets can then turn in the other direction, angling again to accommodate that movement as well. Another thing to keep in mind as you install these is you must create a proper mortise for them to work. A Forstner bit is used to bore a shallow hole near the edge of the apron so the bracket will sit flush, but you must also chisel off the corners so they will not impede the bracket's full movement. Now that you know how figure eight brackets work, here are two alternatives. This is a Z bracket. This is simple to install. I prefer to use a biscuit joiner to just cut slots at each bracket location, but you could also cut a single long slot with a router table or a table saw down the length of your aprons. The clip then slips into the slots and the top tabs are secured to the underside of the table with screws. Because the slots are long, much wider than the brackets are, there's room for them to move side to side along the aprons that are perpendicular to the wood grain, 
as the top expands and contracts. But on the aprons that are parallel to the grain, you must set the brackets back a bit, leaving some space between the bracket and the apron so it will not press the bracket against the apron as the top swells. A third option is an old-fashioned wooden bracket. Like the Z brackets, these fit in slots in the apron, and they work in much the same way. But instead of setting them back from the aprons that are parallel to the top's grain direction, you may bore the mounting holes oversized. Now as the top swells and presses the wood brackets against those aprons, the shaft of the screw can move within the hole to accommodate the movement. There are other ways to attach tabletops. Believe it or not, pocket screws can work too if you counterbore the hole in the pocket so it's larger than the screw shaft. The Shaker's built furniture that way. The important thing is that you take a few minutes to think about how your solid wood tabletop will move and how you may give it the freedom it needs so your hard work can outlast you. See you next time. Some folks are a pleasure to work with, like Ken Rizzo over at woodturnerswonders.com. That's where I get my turning stuff, like sanding supplies and CBN wheels for my grinder. Seriously, if you haven't seen what CBN wheels can do for you, you are missing out. I'll put a link below this video. Use it and tell Ken I sent you. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.